we're getting ready to do integrals over planar regions. So by planar region, we mean a, re a region, say, in the xy plane here. Usually we call it r for a region. Now if you think about doing integration, we've done integrals on one-dimensional intervals. So um, let's say we had the x-axis, right, and we had some starting point at any point. Then we partitioned that interval up. Now one-dimensional Intervals are easy to describe, right? X is just between two values, A and B. We've also done integrals on curves, either in the plane or in space. In that case, we had a little bit of harder time describing them, but we needed to, we needed to bring it back to a one-dimensional interval, say from A to B, and then we used a parameterization. Then partitioning up that interval, which is described by t being between a and b. Partitioning that interval then just broke the curve up into manageable chunks, and we did this one-dimensional integral by uh, integrating actually in the parameter space. Now, in the case of a planar region, what we're going to need to do, since it's two-dimensional, we're actually going to need to slice in two directions. So we'll slice it up um, vertically as well as horizontally to get nice little tiny chunks, right, over which we can evaluate some function. Um, and then sum up the results throughout this, this region in order to do that integral. But the tricky part for us first is just to be able to describe a planar region. So if you have a planar region, um, usually two things will work for us, the two possibilities. One of them is to put the region between two vertical lines. So if we do that, if we can fit that between two vertical lines, let's say that this ends up being where x is a and this is where x is b. I'm thinking of this as the x-axis, so x is going to be between a and b. Then what you can see is those two vertical lines actually break this region up into two functions. There's this green lower function. Let me call that uh, g1 of x. It's a function of x. And this red upper function, g2 of x. So those actually form the bounds on the y, so that for any given value of x between a and b, you can see that there's a starting value and an ending value for y that depends on those. The y value always begins at g1 of x, which depends on where you're at, right? And the y value always ends at g2 of x, which also depends on the x value that you're given. Another option would be to take your region and put it between two horizontal lines. So you put your region between two horizontal lines. Let's say this one turns out to be the location where y is c, and this is where y is d. So now we've got y between two constants, c and d, because we put it between two horizontal lines. And those two horizontal lines actually break the boundary up into two functions. We've got this purple function on the left. Um, let me call that uh, h1 of y now, right? Because this is not a function of x. It doesn't pass the vertical line test, but if you look at it from the side where the input is the given y value, then h of y tells you where x starts, and then the x will continue until you get over to the other side. We could call that function, I drew it in orange here, that function let's call that h2 of y. So given a y value, then we have bounds on x that depend on the y. So regions like this have both representations. Some regions will be easier to, to do it one way or the other, or maybe it might be impossible to do it by putting it between two horizontal lines, but it'll be possible between two vertical lines or vice versa. But what we'll try to do, if there are multiple representations, we'll probably try to choose the one that's, that's easiest for our purpose. But we just want to get used to describing these planar regions so that we can start to integrate over them. Let's look at an example. I've got this little quarter disk here. Usually if we say circle, we should, should mean the, the boundary right, of the disk, and then the disk would be when we have the circle filled in. So I just have a quarter disk here, and I want to use inequalities to describe this, this quarter disk. Now, see, I have, I have two options in this case. I could put this quarter disk between two vertical lines. Okay, so if you look between those two vertical lines, x is going from negative 2 to 0. So x could be from negative 2 up to 0. And then to get the bounds on y, we can see that for any x value, the y value always starts at 0. But it goes up a differing amount depending on the x location that you're at. The closer you get to 0, the further it goes up until by the time you're near 0, you're almost going up the full 2. To get this, this equation for this top function here, 
we can think about the equation for this circle, which is x squared plus y squared equals 4. I'm trying to find the y value up here that goes along with the given x value. So I'm going to solve this equation for y. I'll get y squared equals 4 minus x squared. So y would be plus or minus the square root of 4 minus x squared. However, I can see I want the positive y value, so I'm going to choose the positive square root of 4 minus x squared. If I had chosen the negative value, of course, I would have gotten y values down here that do belong to the circle but aren't really part of this quarter disk. Okay, so we have our upper bound for y. Now, in this case, I could have also put it between two horizontal lines. So despite what I may accidentally say at times, horizontal lines go along the horizon. Vertical lines are turned horizontal lines, hence the vert, the turning part there. Okay, so we had our first description, but now we can get a second description by putting this between two horizontal lines. If we just fit this region perfectly between two horizontal lines, that gives us a range for y. The y values go from 0 to 2. And then given a y value, the x value starts over here, which depends on y, and goes until it reaches 0. So I know the upper bound on x is going to be 0, but the lower bound depends on the actual height, because at a different value of y, the x can go further back. Again, this, the equation of this curve where we need to get is x squared plus y squared equals 4. This time I'm looking for the x value in terms of y, so I'll solve it for x. I get two choices here, x equals plus or minus the square root of 4 minus y squared. And of course, over here, the y values are all negative, so I'm going to choose the negative version, and I get a second representation of this curve. Here we want to sketch the region between two curves and then describe it using inequalities. Now the first curve is actually a line y equals 3x. So it's a line through the origin with slope 3. So I can plot that curve here. We've got, let's see, 0, 0. And every time you go over 1, you go up 3. So 2, 6, and so on. So we get a line here. OK, and then the other curve is this parabola y equals x squared. So it also goes through 0, 0. Um, when you plug in 1, you get out 1. When you plug in 2, you get out 4. When you plug in 3, you get out 9. So we have, let's see, also going backwards, we have that symmetric pattern here. Back 3, uh, let's see, back 3 up 9, right? <clears throat> Where's 9? There it is. OK, so we have. Oops. We have the parabola here, if I sketch it in. OK, so it's important that we recognize what curves look like so that we can do this. But now we have the region between these two. Um, well, the only region between those two curves that's going to be finite must be this one. So we'll assume that it's that. And we've got two choices again. Either put it between two vertical lines. And we can see that the intersection points here, they both meet at the origin. And they both meet at the point 1, 9. Or no, sorry, 3, 9. The point 3, 9. So um, then these two vertical lines here that would, that would just, just contain that region would be that x is between the vertical line 0 and the vertical line 3. And then for a given x value, then our y value starts at the parabola and goes until it hits the line, right? So the lower bound on the y value is going to be x squared, and the upper bound on the y value is going to be 3x. Now, that's not our only choice for describing this region. This region also would fit nicely between two horizontal lines. So I could put this region between two horizontal lines, in which case I have y is between 0 and 9. I know that because I've located that point of intersection there at 3, 9. Um, you could have found it by setting the two y values equal to each other to f see where the, see the cra curve crosses at um, 0 and at 3 for the x value. So, OK, so I've got y between those. And now, if I have any y value in that range, the x value is going to start at the line and go until it hits the parabola. But I need those in terms of y. Now, this lines equation is y equals 3x. But if I want to find the x value, I've got to solve for it. So I get x equals y over 3. So the lower bound on my x is going to be that line, which is now y over 3 if we solve for x in that equation. Then it's going to stop 
when um, y equals x squared. So that would mean x is either plus or minus y, but um, the minus one would be over there, right? Plus or minus square root of y, but that would be over there. So we'll use the positive square root to describe that equation. So we get y, the square root of y here. So in one case, we have x between two constants, and it's y that's between two functions of x. In the other case, we have y between two constants, and it's x's bounds that depend on y.